Hello and welcome to the commentary box and this MLS vodcast. Yes, I am Sam Turner and we are back in business for this episode of, as a preview of the MLS Cup. And maybe we, of course, we're going to have a review of the MLS Cup and a review of the MLS season that is guaranteed. I'm not sure when it's going to come out, but of course it's going to come out after the MLS Cup, which is in under 24 hours. Um, Yeah, this is my university room. Um, I haven't been able to find the time to do a lot of um, vodcasts. Of course, I've done none since I've been at university, but I found out that I've got a free-ish weekend with everything kind of dying down at university before Christmas. Um, And of course, it's the MLS final, cup final, so you got to... I got to do something for it um, because this is my obviously my first season um, kind of basically doing stuff involved with, with the MLS. So I thought I better I better do it. And plus, I'm dead excited. It's supposed to be a really, really good game. Of course, we've got in the Eastern Conference, um, we got Atlanta United. And then from the Western Conference, we have Portland Timbers. <clears throat> now, in this episode, we're going to talk about basically the tactics. We're going to be talking about the players to watch out for in the final. And we're going to talk about the um, both teams' basically progression to this MLS Cup final. So sit back, relax, and enjoy this MLS vodcast. It's really good to be back. So let's start with looking at the journeys that both teams took to get to this MLS Cup. So basically, Portland Timbers were one of the fairly consistent teams in the Western Conference under Giovanni Cervese, a ex-Swansea player, hence why he is friends of the show if you've watched other vodcasts. Um, well, basically, yeah, as I said, they were fairly consistent. They finished in fifth. Um, they had a fairly hard route to the final. In the their conference semi-final, they had to um, play Seattle Sounders, a very big derby, obviously. Um, and they managed to get through that 4-2 on aggregate. And then they got Sporting Kansas City, who I've found really kind of interesting to see how they've progressed this season. And really kind of excited to see like Johnny Russell playing um, really well for them. He's obviously a Scottish winger. Um, well, they managed to get past them as well, who I thought they would actually get to the final. Um, it was I thought it would be between Sporting Kansas um, City and LAFC, but Portland managed to beat LA. Um, sorry, managed to beat Sporting Kansas um, three two on aggregate, and that is meaning that they got to the MLS Cup final. And then as for Atlanta United, they have been the stars of the MLS, really. You can say all you want about New York um, Red Bulls. They have been brilliant, of course, um, especially with um, Bradley Wright Phillips. But Atlanta, for me, have stolen the show this season. They've really shown why the MLS is progressing and why people should watch the MLS because they have play attractive football. They've got big name players who have made a really kind of big impact and probably will go on to do bigger things and I know the MLS is obviously big but they might even go on to do bigger things with like Joseph um, Martinez and of course um, uh, Almiron who is looking to be going to Newcastle in the future Um, but yeah they've had a terrific season they managed to finish second in the Eastern Conference just below um, New York um, Red Bulls but they um in they had to play two New York teams to get to this um finals. So in the their conference semi final they managed to um beat New York um City FC. Um then in their co- the conference final they managed to beat New York Red Bulls four nil on aggregate. So they are a scary team for Portland in the final, of course. So that kind of wraps up their journey as to the final both teams um journey so to say um. And now we'll probably go on to look at which players we should be looking out for in this MLS Cup final. So now on to the big players and the interesting players that we should be looking out for in this MLS Cup final that will most likely make a difference. A big difference. Yeah. So now on to the players that we should be looking out for in this MLS Cup final. And we'll start with the Atlanta United players. 
So we have, of course, Joseph Martinez and Miguel Almiron in this Atlanta United side with Joseph Martinez being the MVP of the MLS. He has been absolutely outstanding this season. He's, I think he smashed the record goals and he's got 34 goals in 38 games for Atlanta United and five assists. What a record that is. He has been outstanding. He, the way he plays for um, Atlanta, he just provides such an outlet for them and, he, and he's just there to kind of to make these runs and just it's, it's brilliant to watch and then just behind him as I mentioned you've got um Miguel Almiron um and he has been just as good and he's been the creative force in that side really feeding um players such as Martinez he's got 11 assists and he's actually bagged a few goals himself with 13 he's got quite the long range shot on him so hopefully he might pull out a cracker for um, Atlanta United fans because of course it is being played at the Mercedes Bend stadiums this final so those are the two attacking players that we should be looking out for in the Atlanta side but also there's some other players that we should also look out for um for Premier League fans that's got to be Brad Guzan of course we'll see him in between the sticks for Atlanta United he's a, a decent few years with Atlanta United and of course he's a top class goalkeeper so looking pretty safe at the back as well as this you've got Parkhurst ex Columbus crew and New York Revolutions MLS player and of course he's played in Denmark as well he is such a stalwart for their um Atlanta side sitting in the middle of the three in the back and he's just he's just there taking things over He's 34 years old now, but he can still do a job, and he's a real kind of leader in that side. Um, then for Portland Timbers, the players that you should be looking out for, of course, it's got to be Sebastian Blanco and Diego Valeri, the maestro, as they call him. Diego Valeri, he has had a, um, a good season so far. Um, he's got 14 goals and 12 assists. He's a bit more, he's a bit like an Amiron for Portland, but... Um, but he's a bit more conservative. He, he's a bit more kind of creative. He, if that makes any sense. He'll, he's a bit more of a ball player rather than a mirror on kind of who likes to run around a lot. If that makes any sense, as well as create chances. So of course Diego Valeri, he, um, been in the MLS for a long time now. Um, he's been doing uh, tremendously well for um, Portland this season. He's kind of been one of their main kind of stalwarts in the team. I think he's got over like 34 appearances so far this season and then of course you've got Sebastian Blanco who again is a bit like um, Valeri he's been a he's been more of a winger player he's um got himself 13 goals and eight assists so with um Portland instead of having one kind of goal scorer and a really creative player it looks like they've got two players in Blanco and Valeri who can both do a bit of both um and as we'll get on to the tactics I think this is really important to their system um, and then of course for Premier League fans and any English football fans you'll know about Liam Ridgewell of course he hasn't played too many in the regular season for Portland Timbers this season only 18 I think games um, but he's been back for the playoffs and he's played in all four games he's he's a very experienced defender he's been there and done that with Portland before and He's club captain, so he's going to be very important to um, this Portland side and keeping their structure, which again I'll get on to in the tactics bit. But of course it's great to see some um, English, ex-English Premier League players playing in this MLS Cup final because at least they're players that I can like think about as well because of course I can know I know most of the MLS players but it's nice to see players that I've seen in the UK play over there because I think it's a great league as I've said before but yeah those are the other play these are the players that you should be looking out for in this MLS Cup final so then on to tactics now it's hard for me to watch a lot of MLS games and I haven't kind of been catching up with the highlights as of recently with all the university work. Um, I wish I have been really, but it's just, it's it's annoying having to try and find the time and I wish I could just watch it on the TV when it's happening. But it, of course in the UK you've got to have Sky and not only have you got to have Sky, but you've got to have Sky football and it's just, and it's odd at different times. So next, next season I'm definitely going to try and watch more games, but this is my view of the tactics of both teams from stuff I've seen, stuff I've read. Um, I mean, I watched this, uh, I think, part of a show last night, which was like 24 hours before the game on the MLS Twitter page. So this is, I've got lots of other things coming together to 
do this tactics bit, but this is what I'm thinking the tactics are going to be like and what other people are going to be thinking the tactics are going to be like. So with Atlanta United, they, they kind of play three at the back and they have wing backs and they, they got the forward um, pairing of like Vilbuena, um, uh, what's his name, Martinez and Almiron. They are a very kind of creative side um, and they heavily rely on Almiron and Martinez for that creativity. Um, and whereas Portland Timbers, they're not as much as a creative side. They're not like a attacking side like Atlanta United. Um, United. Um, they're a bit more like a Burnley, in, if you say, in the Premier League. They play the low block. They have four at the back. Um, they try to commit as as less men forward as they can. Very Italian in that kind of sense. Um, and when they go forward, it's not like they're relying on a few players. Um, it's the kind of... They all kind of chip in into the attack. I mean, obviously, Blanco and Valeri are their main kind of pinpoints, and they're the ones that they kind of get the ball to. But it's it's a lot more f not not kind of fluid, but like structured. If that makes any sense, they've got um, and they obviously Portland Timbers heavily rely on the set piece situations as well with them um, Blanco and Valeri. Um, so it's it's a kind of a mismatch of tactics. You've got a really attacking side meeting a really kind of defensively structured side. So it's be really interesting to see how this um. This works out because on the MLS Twitter page, I think it was um, the Robles, the um, New York um, City keeper, was basically kind of saying like nil nil at half time. I think it's going to make a really interesting dynamic because Atlanta at home are going to think they need to score early and they I think they'll win it. But if they don't score before half time, Portland are going to think all right, this is our game because. In all honesty, I think people are seeing Portland as the underdogs, and I don't, I don't get really why. I mean, they are the smaller team, but they've got such a rich history, and they've, they, I think they're one of the teams that can stop Atlanta, as we've seen in the, in the, um, in the regular season with them getting a one-one draw. Um, so if Portland Timbers can stay structured and use that kind of tactical structure to stop Atlanta from kind of breaking them down, I can see the Portland Timbers doing kind of being very frustrating um so it's a really kind of interesting clash of tactics it'd be really cool to see how the dynamics work between each team and if Almiron and Martinez struggle to get any creativity or whether um we'll see kind of Valeri and Blanco really kind of sitting off and kind of making sure that they're defensively sound rather than trying to go forward which they, they normally do so look out for that in the tactics wise um Hopefully I'll be able to watch it tonight. I'm not sure. I, I might have to get a pass, but then I don't. I don't know how it works with TV licenses because I don't have a TV license here. Um, because I don't watch anything. I don't even watch BBC player, so I'm gonna have to read up on Sky Sports, see if I can get a pass, see if I need a TV license. Because if I can't, I obviously can't watch it. So I just have to keep up with like the text commentary or see if any like talk sport maybe doing commentary on it. So I'll see. I'll see what I can do. But if you're watching it, go and see the tactics. See all the players really kind of think about it and enjoy the match um predictions wise i think as i said if portland go in nil nil i think they can win it like just a sneaky one nil um but for me i think it's gonna be it's gonna be tough for portland timbers but i still i'm tempted to say portland one atlanta nil Oh, I don't know. I don't know. That's my that's my that's my heart's telling me, but my brain is telling me it's going to be something like two nil Atlanta. Joseph Martinez and Emilio getting on the score sheet. So those are my two predictions. It could either go either that way or that way. Um, you know, actually, I'm gonna I'm gonna be brave. I think it's going to be one nil Portland Timbers. You heard it here first. You know, you know, it's going to be a Diego Valeri penalty. Yep, set piece penalty. So you heard it here. Anyways, I hope you enjoy the match. Um, of course, I'm going to do a review of the MLS um, sometime next week, and I've got some a bit of a bit of news actually about um, the American soccer situation and who I am going to be supporting from now on in American soccer. Um, you might, if you've watched the first few kind of um, vodcasts, I have mentioned a tiny bit about how I used to live in America, but if you go check those out, you'll probably know who I'm going to be supporting in the. Um, kind of american soccer system it's fairly kind of an, a new club i'll give you that um but i'll talk about bit about that as well um and how 
I might be going forward with this vodcast. Um, but yeah, just enjoy the MLS Cup final. Here's This has been my preview to it. Hopefully, I'll be able to watch it and hope you enjoy it. And it's me, Sam Turner, out basically. So I shall say goodbye. See ya.